made in Scotland for enjoyment around the world. M8 and its Kingston Bridge make up one of the busiest roads in the UK, carrying up to 150,000 vehicles on it every day. Millions of drivers pass over it every week, but very few know the grim origin of this mega structure. In the 1950s, Anderston was a huge area, once called a village within a village. Anderston Cross was a bustling hub with its tram and train interchange station. Once filled with tenements, working class families, schools, churches, libraries and even a theatre too, the Gaty Cine Theatre, which was the venue that the Beatles played at in 1963, although it was renamed to the Glasgow Concert Hall by that time. The building was closed in 1965 and demolished in 1968 to make way for the M8. Over time, Anderston had become known as the heart of Glasgow with a great sense of pride in its citizens and a strong community spirit. The fate of this area would dramatically shift with the concept to build a motorway directly through the heart of the city. The 1960s brought a new wave of innovation and modernism to Glasgow, and the city was expanding at a fast rate. This meant that anything deemed outdated would be sacrificed for the new and improved. The Bruce Report brought the decision into effect to demolish all the tenements of Old Anderston, branding them slums that were at risk of sinking into the River Clyde. A comprehensive redevelopment plan would destroy and reshape Anderston forever. <laughs> The old Anderston would be completely demolished and reconfigurated into office space, while families were moved away. Out of 11,000 Anderston citizens, only 4,000 were rehoused back into the new Anderston. The tram interchange building was flattened in 1967 and Anderston Cross would be forever swapped with the Anderston Centre. The construction of the MA also buried three ancient graveyards in Anderston. The North Street Cemetery, the Old Relief Church in Heddle Place and St Mark's Churchyard on Cheapside Street, which dated back to around 1732. In 1849, the Glasgow Herald revealed a dangerous management practice in several Glasgow cemeteries, including North Street. Deep pits were dug for pauper burials which consists of many coffins stacked into a 20-foot pit. The three Anderston burial grounds were closed by order of the Sheriff on the 7th of May 1870, under the Public Health Scotland Act of 1867. Descendants were offered the chance to claim the headstones, and out of hundreds of potential interested parties, only six stones were ever reclaimed. This meant that by the 1960s, the process and management of carefully removing every coffin was way above any construction worker's pay grade. It was time for the bulldozers and cement mixers to arrive on the churchyards. A local resident recalls, I lived in Anderston at the time of the North Street Cemetery being bulldozed, and I don't believe that all the bodies were removed. In those days, health and safety would take a poor second place to company consideration, and the public, especially young kids going home from school, we would walk through the construction site if it was on our way home. I have spoken to other people who lived in Anderston at the time and we are all in agreement that when the coffins were sticking out of the soil, the bulldozers would ram them back into the ground. The walls of earth were all eventually covered in concrete. Good friend, for Jesus' sake forbear to dig the dust enclosed here, blessed be the man that spares these stones and cursed be he that moves my bones.
There are two reasons why people speculate that there may be bodies inside of the Kingston Bridge. The graveyard being one reason, with the ancient remains underneath the M8. Although bodies in the pillars refers to the urban legend that gangsters would use the construction site in the 1960s to dispose of bodies. Arthur Thompson was rumoured to have taken advantage of this method, driving up a half-made megastructure in the dead of night to dump the lifeless body of your enemy directly into a concrete pillar that would soon be filled in forever. This may be the case with a man named Archie McGeeky, who was the getaway driver to the ex-police officer turned bank robber Howard Wilson. It is suggested that Wilson killed McGeeky after a bank robbery and dumped him in one of the pillars in 1969. Police Scotland have previously stated interest in the pillars. We will be very interested in anything found during the dismantling of the bridge. Regardless of the gangster activity in the 1960s, the unfortunate fact is that three ancient graveyards were pulverised and covered in concrete to create the M8, and many ancient remains still lay there to this day. So what's your feelings on the Kingston Bridge and its future? Now that it has gained a Category C listed status, the bridge is here to stay. But much can still be done for the pedestrians and cyclists of this area. Do you subscribe to the idea of replacing the M8? Or perhaps you would like this play area thing with a bar attached to it that hangs over the water and under the bridge? Let me know in the comments. Impressive as this structure really is, perhaps it's time for a fresh take on this 1960s brutalist, military-designed box girder of a concrete megastructure that tore the heart out of Glasgow. <laughs>